In this video, I wanna give you an inside look into what it's like having some of the regular site meetings, some of the coordination that goes into doing a project like the Million Dollar Pool. Now, this isn't our normal everyday video. You're not gonna see a ton of construction, but so many of you have asked for more details. Make the videos longer, go more into depth. In this video, our project manager Grant with our superintendent assistant Wes are out there with our concrete contractor going over last week's pour and then they're also doing a pre-inspection. This is on all of the new retaining walls, the rebar, the forms. There's a lot of details that we're looking at before we call our engineer out. This helps for twofold. We wanna pass that engineer inspection first go so that we can move on and it doesn't take longer. But also, we do not wanna look sloppy to our engineer. Once that starts happening, they'll start losing faith in you. So we wanna be nice and tight and doing these pre-inspections helps a ton. It keeps everything moving and I wanna give you guys an inside look into it. So check this one out. Morning y'all, welcome back out to the Million Dollar Pool. Today we're checking on our slab on grade and foundation placements for the elevator pit and the supercar garage. Last time you saw us wrapping up those in slab areas and now we're moving vertical. We're going onto the foundation walls. We're looking at the form work. We're gonna be checking the rebar, making sure that everything that's installed going vertical is going in correctly. Little QC check per se. So yeah, I already know that this is good because when we place our L bars, yep, when we place the first footing, they were already correct. And the footing bars literally just turn up and splice onto the wall bars. So we know that our spacing is already correct. Um, at least, or is, at least in the vertical bars. Um, these were noted at every nine inches, nine, 18, 27, 36. Yeah. So then here we got a nine by five. Yeah. These walls are. Yeah. Got 10, 15. 19 and same spacing 9 18 27 36 45 let me show you a over here a quick break from the video to hear a word from me about our sponsors ends pouches it's top of the morning here at revent builds hq and it's not uncommon for me to be the first one in and the last one out and to fuel my day i use ends pouches i'm not the biggest coffee drinker but i need that caffeine to keep me going each pouch is packed with 50 milligrams of caffeine. I use about one an hour throughout the day. Now remember, if caffeine's not your thing, they have the Focus Blend that is loaded with nootropics and will still keep you dialed in. ENDS has a variety of flavors and a pouch for any purpose. You need to try these things if you haven't yet. Head on over to nzepouches.com and put in promo code JGB at checkout for 15% off. That's promo code JGB at checkout for 15% off. Let's get back to the build. In the video, we were talking about the use of the floating form so you can basically have these slab depressions, which is great. So you have one depression for the elevator pit and then another depression for the sump pit. Um, one thing you'll notice in all these walls too is our waterproofing. So this is a water stop. Um, essentially, this is just like a, a plastic membrane that we use between construction joints. So when you have a foundation to a wall, we have this called a construction joint. Um, essentially where you break up your placements and whenever you have a break in your concrete, you also are allowing water to be introduced through these cracks. So you use um, a water stop. This is specifically called a dumbbell. Um, you can also use like a keyway like they did here to help keep the concrete kind of tucked in between here and help it nestle. It also gives it a little bit of, um, you know, lateral movement stability. A really good looking wall, water stops in, keyways in. Um, yeah, these guys are cruising. So we're walking with the foundation contractor, looking at some details. You know, we checked the rebar spacing, the splice length, it all looks pretty good. But there was a question about something that came up two months ago, which was this wall is adjacent to the existing house. And the house had a concrete slab on grade foundation and we now had to tie this wall into it so 
we asked the engineer for clarification on what to do, which uh, we do through an RFI or request or information. You can also send it through an email, but for something that requires more of like a structural detail or a change in plans, I'll often run RFI. Um, so in this case, I wrote an RFI and said, hey, we have to hide this wall into this slab above it what can we do to make sure that it's structurally approved? Because at the time we didn't have a detail. So what I would do is I would take a sheet and mark it up and then send it into the engineer. And then the engineer gets to come in and put all these notes on it, right? So the engineer said, I would write a question. Um, you're talking about replacing the slab on grade beam with the foundation wall and then asked about a potential turndown detail and then the engineer actually came back over in red and said yep this is what i need i need number five dowels at 12 inches on center showed the little turndown detail and then showing it tying into our new 12 inch retaining wall so this rfi is like an official contract document um, I previously shared it with them and this was kind of like a, oh yeah we have this detail in the SAR file let's make sure to include it so kind of full circle from uh, design to construction and like problem solving and now we're putting it in place we looked at the walls they look good we looked at the slab that was finished phenomenal what we're gonna go look at is where does the wall stop or where it's our top elevation where the walls need to finish so when we put our next member on top of it whether it's a floor truss or maybe it's a, a hanger or actually if you have a slab on grade placement up top uh, what is the elevation of our floor that needs to stop at all right so now we're on the upper level and we were looking at the foundation walls and the elevator pit from a different perspective uh, we were talking about our finish gray or where the walls are going to finish um, we kind of have two different scenarios. One is based off of this slab on grade, which we had the RFI talking about how we're gonna tie into this. So we kind of discussed that a little bit. And then we were talking about everything that's going this way, which will also be slab on grade, but receives a subfloor. So the elevation needs to be a little lower than this floor over here. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to do in my work and in these videos is kind of like, talk about how we can make sure things are correct and the process behind it um, you know Wes has done a really good job on like picking up on just soaking it up and hearing how things are going this just goes to show if you hang around a construction site and you ask the right questions and just keep your ears open um, you're gonna figure some shit out so um, you know Wes is doing a good job out here he's obviously kind of top dog in these poor Sundays so yeah <laughs> all right so within the RFI that we wrote to the engineer we discussed how we were gonna connect this existing slab on grade into our new foundation wall. There really wasn't a detail for that. And we also had to provide our crew with some working space. So we kind of incorporated how we were gonna create space and also connect our two structures together within that RFI. So what will happen here is we'll end up doing something called a drill and epoxy. It's a very common construction method where we essentially drill holes into the existing concrete and then put a piece of rebar in and set it with like a glue, which is basically just a high strength epoxy. Um, and that will grab onto this piece of existing concrete. And then that structural member, if this is our piece of rebar, will actually tie back in to our new wall. So the, wall, the rebar is connecting our existing slab into our new wall, making it one cohesive piece, providing more strength to the wall. This all looks really good. Um, we're looking to place these walls on Thursday, so in two days. And, you know, this crew's done a really good job. Um, I think they'll just knock it out of the park and keep rolling. You're probably wondering why we have this like massive gap in our wall here. Um, this massive gap provides two things. One is area for the crew to work. And the other is that this actually gets waterproofing. Because this is, this is the exterior of the building, um, we need to make sure that water does not enter into our lower foundation walls. Concrete is naturally porous. It's just made of rock, which over time water moves through. So we'll end up lining these walls with a liquid membrane that ends up kind of like waterproofing the whole system. And then we'll line this entire thing with a, like a French drain 
that runs around the entire perimeter of the building. And then we'll end up putting gravel backfill through this whole thing. So the water can flow freely down to the French drain and then out, um, out behind our wall. Limestone is a sedimentary rock, which means it's composed of like tiny particles that have been deposited over time and then compressed. And that's why you see all these like layers is because it was literally formed by stacking stuff. And then you can actually see over time where like different periods of sediment were deposited. So we have this like grayer layer. And then on top of that, we have this more like brown kind of layer, which is what you see a lot around Austin. Um, it's really just, you know, was deposited during a different time when the earth was covered by water. And a lot of this is comprised of like, limestone is typically comprised of like calcium, which is, you find a lot in shells. So a lot of this is literally like old animal shells, which is nuts to think that like, this is all like a lot of this is literally just like shells, all of it. Damn. I didn't know that. I thought it was rock. It, well, rock is... Rock is... I mean, 